Oh, we're recording right yes. now. Today, we're going to be talking about... Headaches. Headaches. Yes. Now. Oh, my head. Ooh, headaches. <laughs> Getting the intro right's a headache. <laughs> better the show's working right i like this gosh i'm dr donish uh medical director of wellward anesthesiologist and board certified board certified anesthesiologist and regenerative pain specialist i want to welcome you to our 50 shades of pain show where we empower our patients on what to do how to take care of their bodies better and navigate a healthcare system that's not designed to make you better but rather perpetuate and just placate the problems mm-hmm I'm with my co-host, Dr. James Escaloni, physical therapist and biomechanical extraordinaire. And today, we'll, we're talking about headaches. Headaches. All right. So for you guys at home, we are talking big time about headaches. You guys have seen our series where we talked about whiplash. Everything you needed to know about whiplash to help you and your loved ones to get the care that you deserve. Now, this is a big topic for a lot of people, headaches. And it's so deep. Fun fact for you guys at home, if you look up the International Headache Society, they've got 14 types of headaches and up to 10 subcategories. Now, I'm not very good at math, but I believe 14 times 10 is about 140. Am I right? Yes. I need, a, I need my abacus. Okay, so if that's that many headaches, how do we treat it? What do we do? What even is the headache? So that's where we're going to help you out today. So any of you guys who are suffering with headaches, we're going to give you some guidance over the course of this one. We're going to get more specific for different types of treatment. What exactly causes headaches? Different types of things out there to help you so they don't happen in the first place and the rest of our series. But today, start from square one, understanding headaches. So, Dr. Donish, what exactly is a basic headache? James, the medical answer for that is it's when your head aches. Oh. Dun, dun. <laughs> Wow, I'm so enlightened. I love this. All so right. there are many reasons why people have headaches. Um, I mean, it, you know, and, and just if you notice how many different descriptions of headaches there are, you've got headaches that are in the front, temples, back of the head. You've got headaches that have piercing feeling, headaches that have like a pulsation to it, achy pains, headaches that have other symptoms associated with it, like uh, changes in vision, nausea, hearing things, seeing things. There are so many different types of headaches. That's one of the biggest def- challenges is that headaches are very individual, individualistic. So it's hard to categorize headaches and it's, hard, it's even harder to get a better grasp of what do we do about them, how do we treat them. However, we have found some commonalities among various types of headaches and we know that they can come from uh, uh, a number of sources but a lot of them come from the peripheral nerves. Because we talked about fascia before, how nerves trans, they, they course throughout the body, and they're running through layers of tissue that we call fascia. So, like if you were to take a slice of, if I took like my, you know, samurai sword and I cut James in half and I looked at him on the inside, I would see that there are many different layers to the tissue, and through those those layers is where the wiring of our body runs. So like our blood vessels, our nerves, uh, all of those are running through these different layers. So what do you think is gonna happen if I move my arm like this? What are those wires gonna have to do? Kind of just floss back and forth between that tissue, right? Exactly, and he says flossing because that's actually a technique that physical therapists use. (laughs) Is to floss that nerve, oh no, floss that nerve back and forth. <laughs> you, you guys can't, can't see, it. see this, He's actually doing I'm the amazing flossing. at this flossing. <laughs> that comes with the territory as a PT, right? <laughs> so those nerves have to floss through the tissue. Now, what do you think happens as we age? Are we gonna have more smooth tissue that kind of flows everywhere? Or is it gonna be kind of wrinkly tissue that can have like nooks and crannies and places for nerves to get stuck. I'm assuming that it's gonna get a little bit worse the older we get. That's very true. Our, our tissues become 
uh, adhesive. So parts of us that we don't want to be adhesive become adhesive. The parts that we do want to become adhesive lose their adhesiveness or stickiness. So as we age, everything is changing. And one of the things that happens in the head is that the spacing for those nerves to run, those, those planes in which those wires are running, are very, very, very thin. So it doesn't take a whole lot for there to be an alteration in where those nerves have to go and how they get there. And that can be a very simple, simple situation where the nerve just gets entrapped in muscles and then it becomes irritated. And every time you move in a certain way, it doesn't hurt with one or two tugs, but you keep doing that over and over and over over the course of the day and it starts to evolve into a headache. So peripheral nerves are just like humans. If you decrease the space between nerves, after a while, <laughs> this becomes a little bit irritating. Yeah, I hope you don't have COVID. <laughs> no, I definitely have coffee breath, though. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's why we wear the masks here. But all right, so we figured that part out. So how does a migraine play into this? Isn't that just another word for headache? It is, uh, except a migraine is a special kind of headache where it's, it's almost, I like to think of it as it's a miniature seizure taking place because you start to irritate a nerve and hit it repetitively with a signal that signals irritation. And that nerve over time is gonna become uh, more and more sensitive. And so the threshold for stimulation goes down. And now it just takes a tiny little whiff and it's gonna set this cascade of signals going off in the, in the brain, all of which will just kind of start to uh, blow up and cause a lot of noise in the brain that you're your brain is going to interpret as a headache or a migraine headache. Oh, well, that's why people feel like their brain's practically blowing up in a bad migraine, huh? Yeah, so if, it's interesting because a lot of things happen. Um, there are many theories as to why people get migraine headaches. One of them is, uh, an old one, is that it causes the blood vessels to constrict, and so it changes the circulation pattern in the brain, and that causes a headache. Another theory is that 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 miniature seizure activity where the brain is just going haywire with signals, it's, it's very consuming, of energy consuming for the brain. And so it starts to accumulate metabolites and irritants and, and byproducts of all that activity. And that in and of itself can be very irritating. A third theory is that the chemicals that um, the brain sits in, so we've talked about the chemical soup that the brain sits in, that can start to accumulate some, some inflammatory markers or toxins or irritants, whatever you want to call it. And that sensitizes the, the water balloon in which the brain sits. And when that starts to get irritated, it causes a headache. I often think of those headaches as um, the kind where if you were to bear down and like do what's called a Valsalva maneuver, where you're just increasing the pressure in your brain. You remember when we were kids and, and you would get together and you'd go, until your face turned I red? I had Nintendo. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a kid. We didn't have that kind of, well, I did. we did. I just didn't have a Nintendo, and I always went to my neighbor's house. <laughs> but it's one of those things that we did as a kid was we would just make our faces red. Now, thank God kids are so rubbery because an older person doing that could, you know, you could cause an aneurysm oh, wow but as a kid you didn't think about that and what you were doing is you were just simply compressing pressure in your chest and moving all the blood flow and all the circulation getting it stuck in your head so your head's going to kind of expand you actually get an expansion in the fluid of that water balloon that contains the brain that water balloon is really sensitive like if you if there's any kind of tug or pull on that the meninges it feels like an intense headache. So it and doesn't... And is what? It's that water balloon. Oh, so, okay. So like you got the brain and then outside of the brain, which is like the walnut, you got fluid through which all this circulation, all those irritants can flow. And then outside of that, you have uh, the water balloon or the skin that surrounds the fluid that contains the brain. And then you get to the skull and then the skin above the skull. Okay. I'm kind so, of getting that picture now. So those meninges are really sensitive to any kind of changes in pH, changes in chemical milieu, changes in metabolites, um, changes in pressure, that all of that will have an impact on the, the cellophane or the, the water balloon that contains the brain. Uh, so for you guys at home, this is why this has to be a series. A little more complicated than just, oh, I just need an Excedrin. 
if we can say that on this show. Um, <laughs> yeah, so with all of those things, talking about brains exploding, how do you know if your headache is something that you actually do need to go to the emergency room for? You know, the, the adage that they said when we were in medical school is if you have the worst headache of your life, essentially if it's a headache that is different than what you've experienced before, good reason to get that worked up and checked out. But if it's a headache that you've had over and over and over again, not that you should ignore it, but it should still be checked out, um, it's just not something that would be an emergency to do. I would follow up with your primary care doctor, neurologist, a clinician like ourselves who is well versed in understanding and teasing apart the different types of headaches that are out there so that we can get to the root cause because there's a lot of really easy solutions for headaches that are very very uncommon in the medical community people just don't know about these reasons hmm. um, but we've really evolved a, tech, a, a technology and a methodology to tease these apart and figure out is this a headache that's coming from a nerve that's been entrapped? Is it a headache that's coming from chemical irritants that build up in the brain? Is it a headache that comes from that water balloon? These, uh, one I forgot, is coming from the neck. Now, your, the neck uh, muscles sandwich a whole bunch of nerves that go up to the brain. There you go, right there. You can't really see it, but it's there. I Thomas. do, in fact, have a neck and a brain both contained right here. <laughs> both neck and brain. He gets, he gets even more offended if I say he has a tiny neck than a tiny brain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so your neck muscles sandwich a whole bunch of nerves that go up to the brain, but you also have nerves that have dual functions. Like, there's a nerve that goes to the joints of the neck, which also goes up to the back of the head. So if you've got a lot of these back-sided headaches, it's, it can often be because of the joints of the neck being problematic. And we see that a lot with people who've had a car accident or some major change in their neck functionality. They start getting headaches on a regular basis. It's not something you have to live with. There are definitely some really good solutions for that. So it sounds like when people are starting to learn more about headaches and need some treatment, they need somebody who can understand the mechanical pressures around the neck and the nerves and the head, the physiology on the inside of the brain, and they need somebody who's smart enough to be able to put all these together with enough services in a single environment so they can piece apart these to help that person. Where could they find something like this? <laughs> I don't know. Ding! Oh my gosh, <laughs> everything you need here. Uh, we heal headaches. Why do I keep saying heal? Because we have a methodology that we call Heal, which is right. hearing the message our body conveys with pain, envisioning what life is meant to be like, because a lot of people just lose who they are when they're dealing with a chronic pain issue, alleviating the symptoms or reducing the impact, developing that short-term plan to just get you comfortable, and then leveraging repair mechanisms within the body. So your body's always in that state of flux and repair. Our role is just simply to leverage that and, and use it in situations where uh, a problem is not getting better and it's developing into a chronic pain. Sounds like a lot more people need the HEAL methodology in their headache world. Yeah, because there's a lot of treatments out there. We talk about treatments for the back, treatments for the neck, things that will alleviate the symptoms but don't really get rid of the, some of the causes. And headaches are a great example. People get Botox injections all the time for headaches. And those are typically symptomatic relievers. They're not really getting at the root cause because it's just relaxing those, those tension layers through which the nerves run, but it's never actually breaking up the scarring or irritation that's, uh, that's entrapping those nerves. Uh -huh. So rather than treat the symptom, we want to treat the cause and really resolve the problem for, for good. Sounds like for you guys at home, once you catch the next episode, you're going to understand what you need to do next to help you out with those migraines, headaches, and even more. That's right. Mm -hmm. Should we try that transition again? Sure. All right. Let's see if this works. <laughs>